Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Trade Sailor Project. Today, we're going to look at the construction. So we're at the construction stage of the first iteration of this design. This is a very high over level, so we're mainly uh, focusing on plate thicknesses and uh, we get an idea of the stiffening system and the size of the stiffeners to uh, help us uh, calculate the steel weight and uh, give us a bit of an idea. So uh, high level, we've determined uh, for the boat as the construction zones. That's what I've done for this one. So I found for this one roughly three zones. One is the aft ship aft of the cargo hold uh, where the accommodation is. Uh, one is the cargo hold itself where we've got a double bottom and a double side. And then we've got uh, the area forward of the cargo hold, which is basically a uh, um, so it's single, single side and bit with double bottom and a bit with single bottom. Uh, yeah, so we set up uh, three mainframes, so three su cuts through these three zones. And for that, we determine the scantlings. And scantlings are the thickness plate thicknesses and the stiffness sizes. Um, this data I can use to determine the stiffener to weight, uh, so stiffener to plating ratio. So I calculate the weight for the plating, calculate the weight for the stiffeners, and then I know uh, a factor in between, which I then can use in my weight calculation. But that, with that later, in, the, in one of the next stages. Uh, also, we're looking at the ease of building. So for this one, I've chosen for a transverse framing system. Um, I'll show you that a little bit later, but it's easier to build, less welding and a little bit heavier. So this is an example of a longitudinal framing system. This is of the 20 meter project I did uh, two years ago. Um, yeah, so you can see here longitudinal stiffeners and transverse frames. Uh, for this project, I don't have any longitudinal stiffeners. I just have transverse frames. And these will be a bit smaller because they're spaced closer together. Uh, you basically got all rings uh, building, setting up the boat. Um, yeah, like the structural zones I said, I've determined three structural zones. I'll show you the sections uh, a little bit later. Um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit heavier than a longitudinal frame system, but it's a lot easier to build because there's not all the longitudinals to weld out and to lay out. Uh, and that was my main focus, is to make it easy to build for, uh, for smaller yards. So in the 3D model we've uh, built uh, last week with the general arrangement, I've basically made three cuts. This is the cut through the accommodation, a cut through the cargo section, so you can see the containers and the cargo hold, and a cut through the forward cargo area, which basically gives me the whole uh, the numbers for the whole four ship. Um, yeah, so I'm using for the construction mainly a CNC cut uh, parts. So there's not a lot of uh, standard stiffeners, but uh, everything CNC cut just makes the building a lot easier because you don't have to have a, uh, a lofting floor to uh, lay out all your uh, uh, stiffeners on and use an egg hole to, uh, to shape them. So these sections I used, uh, I actually drew these sections by calculating them in, uh, in the Lloyd's uh, Register SSC program, Special Service Craft. They've got a module as well for sailing boats, so I've used uh, the sailing boat setting for this, uh, for this project. SSC is, uh, gives a, a fairly strong and solid construction. So uh, yeah, that's my basis. And from the, that in the 3D model, I made uh, the 2D drawing. And it's basically got all the dimensions and everything in it we need later. So let's have a look at that. So let's have a look at the mainframe drawing. So I've selected five, uh, selected three sections through the ship. One at the accommodation, one at the cargo hold, and one at the forward cargo hold. And this will give me enough uh, coverage to determine the average uh, plating to stiffener ratios for all the, um, for all the plating. So let's have a look. So we've got the, about frame five, which is control the area in the accommodation. This is the accommodation. This is the engine room. So we've got floors. We've got the bottom plating uh, given. Uh, we've got some stiffeners, aluminium bit at the top. So the idea is to make the deck house aluminium. So there will be a, a split here. Uh, then we've got the uh, fr about frame 14, which is in the cargo hold area. Um, we've got the same thing. We've got a tank top. We've got a bottom uh, framing and plating, uh, a side tank. So this will be ballast tank, this will be ballast tank. Uh, and we've got a keel. All this construction is still very, very preliminary and more just to give us an idea and to uh, give us an, the right, a good number for the uh, stiffener to plating uh, ratio. And this is in the forward cargo hold. So this will be open cargo hold. Uh, still a tank top, a tank underneath and all the platings. And that's about it. 
So that sums up uh, this week's uh, episode about the construction. Uh, if you get any questions, uh, please uh, pop it in the comments. Um, yeah, next week we're going to talk about uh, resistance and power. So we're going to look at um, sailing, uh, the VPP I use for that, uh, velocity prediction program for this stage. Uh, we're going to look at the resistance of the hull in the water. And we're going to look at some uh, some shaft lines and electric engines. So if you know any electric engines from a roughly 160 to 200 uh, whatever kilowatts, uh, please let me know in the comments as well. Still looking. Uh, it's very hard to find the good information on the, on the, on engines in this size. There's a lot of development, but not a lot of uh, off the shelf uh, items. So uh, yeah, if you can help out, please let me know. And uh, hope looking forward to see you next week. Bye.